Ladies and gentlemen, everyone around the world, look who we have here, Rena. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you? I'm fine. It's re- very, very nice to be here finally and to meet you, Dan. Um, very, very nice busy. to meet you too. We were just talking about you being a bit of a night owl. You were up till, what, 4 a.m. yesterday? Yeah, you don't have to publicise that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, it might have been slightly later, but I'm just going to stick to four, okay? <laughs> what? So you've just always enjoyed that peace at night where you can sit down yeah, and get things so. done? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, as I said, I think because also my family were kind of night owls. My mum was a night owl and, you know, all, when I was at school, all these kids used to go on about, oh, I went to bed at seven. <laughs> really? I was a... I was up at midnight, so I, I've kind of stuck to that. <laughs> you never got in trouble for staying up late. No, she. That was just kind of how my my house functioned, really. So yeah, and I I do try, I do try, and I think if I'm in bed by three, I I think that's quite early. So yeah. <laughs> 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 so okay, okay. Now I've got to dive further. So, okay. would you get more done between twelve and three than you would twelve and three in the day? Oh God, yes. <laughs> oh God, no. It takes me forever to wake up. I mean, even if I get up early, it takes at least two hours for my brain to start functioning properly. I mean, when I was when I was doing Ethel, I kind of insisted that pit stop kind. Of do afternoon sessions for me because when they used to occasionally they drag me in at 10 in the morning and I just think listen if we're doing hag 10 in the morning is fine but if you want nice auntie Ethel do not <laughs> ask me in at 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh how did you even come up with that hag voice man it was brilliant. Really thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm I don't know. That thing, to be absolutely honest, when I when my agent said you've got it and it's mocap, and I thought, so I kind of pretended, oh yeah, yeah, right, mocap, yeah, okay, thinking I have absolutely no idea what mocap is, because <laughs> most of my work has been theatre and a bit of telly and that kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, this was my first time, and uh, so I sort of turned up and they and they put me in this absolutely hideous suit, um, <laughs> of which there I think there are no photos. Thank God. Um, and they just said, right, off you go. And I thought, oh, right, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> and um, I just kind of, you kind of, I suppose you find it really, don't you? When you get the, when you see the script properly, you just start working on it and hoping. And if, and obviously if it's wrong, they'll tell you. So um, I hope it worked out okay. I and mean, they seemed happy with it. And I don't know well, how I came up with it. I think it was. I think it was there. I think I was made to play hag. Really, wasn't. It? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You were made to play, uh, you know, lovely Tara. I mean, that was a great character. <laughs> oh, Tara! God. Tara's fucking this, isn't she? I love Tara. Oh, I, I've <laughs> yeah, had comments so saying I'd die for Tara. Some people I saying that I saw that. Yeah, I did think I was pushing it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, this this is what you do as an actor. You create that emotional yeah. connection. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I, I channeled a few people I knew. I won't name any names. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Even with the hag. The less said about that, the better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep messing with my hair because my hair is wet, so it's driving. Oh no! You look fantastic. Bit. Don't worry about that. Yeah. yeah. I'm the one yeah, that you should be worried. Angelina Jolie, didn't you? And yeah, and here it is. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how did you find that mocap for the first time? Daunting, nervous, um, freeing? Well, actually, I have to say the people at Pit Stop were so nice um, that they kind of, I don't know, and they 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 made me feel very very comfortable because I they, it was a completely new world to me. I mean, I'd voiced characters before in um, a couple of video games years ago, um, but not motion capture. They were very easygoing, and they kind of let me find it, I suppose. And we had very good directors, um, and voice directors, and movement directors. So yeah, eventually kind of got there. And I suspect there's quite a big difference between 
the very early recordings and then later because it develops, I hope. Do you find yourself yeah. saying petal in your normal <laughs> vocabulary now? <laughs> yes, actually, I I do. And actually, someone I saw someone tweeted um, petal to the metal, and I thought, that's brilliant. <laughs> I must use that. <laughs> Petal to the metal. I like petal to the metal. That's fantastic. <laughs> Have you seen that transforming scene where you uh, go from Ethel to the hag? Have you watched that? Yes, I have seen that a few times. Do you know, I'm, I, I wasn't sure whether to confess to this, but I haven't actually seen the game. I've seen bits of it on YouTube. I've never played a, a computer game. I thought I, that's I'm, what you were doing till 4 a.m. every night. Playing Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. That's right, because, yeah, I'm so technologically advanced. <laughs> now, uh, I mean, I've, my nephews in L.A., they play computer games, so I'd sort of occasionally watch over their shoulder and think, what the hell are these kids doing? But that's as, <laughs> that, that's as close as I got. Um, yeah. But no, so I've seen bits on YouTube, and uh, you know some of the a lot of the other characters, and yeah, I mean it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary what they've created. Did you ever think um, years ago when you started acting that this is where <laughs> you'd be, or, or even this is where you could this could happen? You know, with gaming and acting in that sort of landscape. Uh, no, never occurred to me. Never, never. And actually, I was talking to one of the other actors who was also. How can one put this mature who played one of the other characters? And he was saying the same thing. He said, I never in my life did I ever think I'd be doing this at this stage of life, <laughs> this stage in my career. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's been great and it's been very exciting. Um, and I've I've really enjoyed it because those first few sessions, I thought this is going to be a nightmare. Um but actually, I re I really got to enjoy it in the end, and now I feel like I'm a mocap supremo. Thank you. <laughs> oh, an aficionado now. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the bug though? Um, well, I actually after I finished Ethel, I went on to do um, is it Warhammer Three Total War? That um, is you. Um, We've had quick people asking, "Is that you?" It is Mother Ostankia. Nice. There you go. Yes, I seem to be cornering the market on hags. I don't know what my <laughs> agent is trying to tell me here. <laughs> so, all right, another hag. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a lot of hags in video games for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just waiting for the next hag opportunity, really. Um, <laughs> No, you're much better as a, as a beautiful auntie, lovable auntie. You, you say that to all the girls, don't you? I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. I do not. Thank you very much. I shall take the compliment, even if it's not meant. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah. So uh, take me back to the earlier days. You were doing copywriting and, and writing and... yeah. And editing, I was a copy because you know actors because you spend quite a lot of time out of work, um, so you have to find other things to do. And I do kind of wordy things. So I was an editor for a political publishing company and um, a freelance te uh, copy editor, and also I was a copywriter. Um, and because that you know when you're freelance, it allows you to do auditions and you can do it in your own time. And if you can't do it, you can just say I'm not available. So, yeah, so I did all that kind of work as well. So you're saying your acting bio must be the most well-written in the industry. <laughs> Do you know, the weird thing is I'm really bad at writing for myself. When someone else gives me a brief and says, this is what I want you to do, I'm, oh, yeah, fine, I know what to do. But for me, I'm completely, uh, no, I'm not great at that, actually. I'm Self-promotion, mm -mm, mm -mm, not my thing. Did you learn to do that? Was it a skill you always had? I think um, I was quite a geeky child and I was I read a lot. Um, so, you know, sort of spelling and grammar. And I, I am a bit of a pedant when it comes to all that kind of thing. And I sort of stop them in, a, in, in the middle of motion capture and say, no, I'm sorry, I'm, that, the syntax there is completely incorrect. And so they, would, and they were very good. They, they were very patient with me. <laughs> but so, no, I think because I read a lot and then um, – and then I was working for this uh, political publishers and um, 
and I needed a, a proofreader to start with. And I, I did that. And then I did the editing. And then I went on to copywriting. And so, yeah, I've I've always been a kind of, yeah, wordy, geeky person. And you still read to this day? Yeah. Yes, I do. I do. I know. Actual books. Do you remember those? Because you're a young person. You probably don't remember what books look like, do you? <laughs> oh, I haven't read a book in a while. I hate to say. Yeah. Yeah. It is complete. I think it's very generational, actually. But yeah, I do still. Re- I mean, I did actually have a Kindle, but uh, I, I. Yeah, I kind of prefer. Not. I would prefer hearing your voice read a book. Do you know what I mean? Right. Than actually that, reading yeah. myself. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that might just be me. My younger brother, he loves reading. He's read like 100 books oh, really? last year. Yeah. Okay. And he's he's only 23. So it just oh, right. depends. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. No, I mean, I you know when I do when I do meet young people, my dear, uh, they so often say they don't read books, but they will read on you know the audio books and things like that. What sort of books are you yeah. reading? Fantasy, fiction, nonfiction, crime. I read a, quite a lot of nonfiction now um, because I am a bit of a political animal, so I read a lot of politics stuff. Oh. You're going to sleep now, aren't you? No, no. <laughs> You, so you're really into politics? Yeah, yeah. I and mean, that was my degree. I have a, my degree is in politics. Um, and and then when I decided I probably, you know, if you if I wanted to be prime minister, I'd have to get up early. And I thought it's not for me, I think. So, um, <laughs> That's the only unless drawback. I could do a, <laughs> unless I could do a job share, sort of have a an AM, PM, and I'd be PM, PM. But... <laughs> So, so no, I, I didn't go into politics. You wouldn't. You would never go into it yourself. You never thought oh, about God, that. No. no, no. I think I, it's too brutal. I'm too wussy for that. <laughs> it's it's a brutal, brutal um, industry. I think industry. I don't know, but a pro, um, brutal yeah, in terms of the the media scrutiny. Or I think in terms of the media scrutiny, not that I have that much to hide. I'm not that exciting to be absolutely honest. I you know, I've got well, I've got I may have kind no, of not many skeletons in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, if I could find the closet, that would help. <laughs> um, but no, I think the, the media scrutiny and 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 actually, so much of it, I think, so much of it is boring. Actually, and I'm just, I'm too impatient. I think. No, that's it. Sorry, I'm lying. I, I have a slight cold. So between wet hair and a cold, this is, <laughs> this is. That just shows your dedication <laughs> to this yes, show. Exactly, exactly, darling. Yeah, yeah. You would even <laughs> do this when you're sick. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh yes, don't worry about me. Yeah, I know you love animals as well. Now yeah. you got a rescue dog. Yes, I did have two Romanian rescues. Um, they, I, I had to put one to sleep last year because she was sixteen, and she oh. was she, she'd gone gaga, completely gaga. Um, but I've still got the other one who is who's very sweet, but quite possibly the dimmest dog I've ever had. Um, but he's very nice. He's nice. Yeah. I've always had rescue dogs though. Have you? Yeah. 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 We. Um, yeah. Our parents have a, a rescue and it's, yeah, as you said, it's a mix of about 10 different things. Oh, there. right. Because they did a little oh, study right. on, they got it, they went and sent it off and got a little study or something and got oh, that right. back. Oh, right. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Is he big or is it, is it a little one? They're twins. They're, they're, um, they're little. They're kind of mid range little. Right. Yeah. I couldn't right. even tell you what they are, but they're crazy, <laughs> mother. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, crazy I know. dogs. I know. You don't, you don't, you never know quite what you're getting with a rescue, but they're great. I, I've always had them. I'm glad you've got rescue. That's good. <laughs> so we've got a lot of fan questions here that got sent through. Really? Okay. Do you remember this line, Rena? I'll rip your spine out, you asshole. <laughs> yeah. That seems that seems to be a very popular one, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I really do remember that line. And when I met Rachel, who was the writer, she was this lovely, sweet person. And I thought, where did that come from? 
<laughs> oh, you did meet the writer. That's good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, not till after we'd finished. But, yeah, I met her and she she's very nice, very, very nice person. But yeah, do you think of, how did this come out of you, woman? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the, she's the, the hag. Ethel is it's not nice, and Rachel was great. She was such a. It was so nice to meet her, actually. So, so good. yeah, oh, yeah, I do remember that line definitely. <laughs> How did you get into acting for gaming? <laughs> Accidentally, no. I mean, what happened was because my voiceover it came through my voiceover agent rather than my theatrical agent, and um, they because I. I, I do quite uh, do different accents, and also because I'm, let's put this I'm more mature, and it was they wanted mature voices, young at heart. And, um, yeah, okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> um, so yeah, they they put me up for it, and because I am somewhat technologically talented, I, I missed the deadline. I did that. I did the sort of the test for it on my iPhone. Oh. And then missed the deadline for it. And I thought, oh, God. Anyway, so I sent it in, and then I didn't hear anything for ages. And I thought, oh, well, I missed the deadline, didn't get it. And then my agent phoned and said, oh, you've got it. Like, oh, okay. So that that's how that happened. Um, yeah. So nothing sort of hugely exciting, but it was it was just I think they they went through their client list and thought, who's, who's hag-like? And, and thought, <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's send you in. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they, they said, who's the best at accents? Yes. Could, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was that one. Especially <laughs> Irish accents, yeah? Well, y- yeah, I and mean, I've got quite a lot of Irish friends. Um, oh, that's but, the key I, to nailing an yeah. accent? Have friends yes. from there. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, in one video game years years ago that I just voiced, I did Australian. And if I have a if I have a particular character in mind, I can do it. And I thought, okay, who's this? And I came up with Julia Gillard. And so I did a sort of Julia Gillard accent. <laughs> thought, okay, that'll do. Um, so, yeah, no, I have a good ear for accents, but I can't sing to save my life. So you it's can't not sing. the same thing at all. Oh, no, can't okay. sing. Can't sing, but um, can talk a lot. I'll shut up now. You know this is about you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just worried that I'm not letting you get a word in, so I'm going to be quiet. Oh, now. that's what I love. I don't want to get a word in. That's, that's oh, the best thing. I want in. to hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favourite kind of pie and what's Auntie Ethel's favourite <laughs> kind of pie? <laughs> Pie. Well, now my favorite kind of pie. I'm vegan, so my favorite kind of pie is mushroom. But oh. Auntie Ethel's would, I think, be a, sp- a little bit of dog mixed with leeks and maybe the odd child. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's Auntie Ethel, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's actually a great answer. That's, that sounds exactly right. Uh, <laughs> favorite line you remember recording, Rena? Oh my God, there were so many. many. Too many. Yeah. Um, oh God, but there were um, there were thousand, I think there were something like two thousand lines. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I started on it in 2019. So You're kidding? I, yeah. 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 2019. Shit. I think was it September 2019? Yeah. Um, finished well last in the year. hold on in the pandemic before just it before, was before the, just before yeah it was yeah. before the pandemic um I think it was September 2019 and so we did quite a lot of sessions then and then of course lockdown came in so we couldn't do anything and then gradually as lockdown was sort of you know they lifted lockdown but we still had to be very careful um so we could go and they would take our temperature and test things. And, of course, because you're in a studio by yourself, you're not actually interacting with anyone. Um, you could do it. Um, so, we, um, yeah, so it was, yeah, lockdown obviously delayed a lot of it. Uh, that, that really did stop recording for a long time. But um, then when did we pick up again? I think towards the end of 2020 we picked up again. How did you yeah. go during COVID? Um, 
it was it was weird. <laughs> it was, yeah. I, di- I did actually get COVID, and the annoying thing was when I I was asked to do um, a sort of read through for a part a TV pilot, and um, and I thought oh, this is going to be really exciting. And of course, the day before I was supposed to go to the read through, I got COVID and I couldn't go. So it was uh, really frustrating. What character was that going to be? Um. That uh, well, that, uh, amazingly, that wasn't a hag. It was a nice lady. Thank you uh, for once uh, to to play a nice lady. <laughs> so you prefer, um, but you prefer playing nice over evil. Well, um, she was she was funny. It, it was a comedy. It oh, was a comedy. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Um, so that that was okay. But um, no, I t- I do t- actually now I think about it. I do tend to get cast as as. Fairly miserable characters, actually. But I don't know. <laughs> Have you changed much since COVID, do you think? Yes, I've become even more curmudgeonly, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now you sound like me. Oh, are you a, a fellow curmudgeon? Yeah, I think oh, so. Good. I oh, mean, well, hold good. on, what's I the qualifiers for a curmudgeon? Sort of a general grumpiness, I think. <sighs> In the morning, in the morning, mm. Mm. but mm. I, I liven up as the day goes on. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, right, okay. And do you stay livened up, or does it go to sort of, sort of peak and <laughs> a bit of a yeah, drop? it might peak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might be a peak. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Do you? But do you no, get annoyed? I... Do you get annoyed at random things, like just stupid things? Annoy constantly. You? Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm walking down the road and there's too many people. There's not enough people. The children are in the way. That why? Why aren't they continuing? Oh, drive me! I drive myself up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an extremely annoying person no, and annoyed not. as well. <laughs> no, you're not. You're lovely. How would you deal with the hag yourself, Rena? Oh God! If you had oh, to God. come up against the hag, how would you? Would you let her take your eye out? What would you do? That's a good question. Um, I think that might be another one I have to get back to you on. That. <laughs> I really sort of, because the hag is so kind of it, she, she's so she's so sort of um, important to me and so much a part of me that I can't imagine someone else having to deal with her. How's that for an answer? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Have you ever done stage work? Your voice would rock. In theatre, well, you just mentioned that before. You have done some theatre over the years, yeah? Yeah. I do mostly theatre, actually. I like theatre. I mean, it's absolutely terrifying, but I'm, I haven't done theatre for quite a while. I what, can't remember the last time. The last, what was the last thing? Richard II. I played the Duchess of Gloucester. Um, Richard II. No, I've done mostly stage work, mostly stage. I like stage. What, but playing just, royal characters? Playing what sort of characters are we talking? Yes, well, she was a duchess. Obviously, because that was her name. Um, I t- for TV, I tend to play lawyers and solicitors and, and barristers and things. Um, and and what's your lawyer voice? Go to lawyer voice. This is my lawyer voice. Oh, you know, my serious grown up lawyer voice. Yes. Oh wow! My Thank you. Yes, and that's supposed to be intimidating. So I hope you're intimidated. Can I hire you <laughs> to defend me <laughs> in court? <laughs> 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 yes, I mean, when I was when I was young, I wanted to be a barrister. Then I realised it was just because I wanted to kind of swan around in a gown and wig, and I thought that's not a good enough reason. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked a, I've, I've asked a handful of people this. I'll ask you as well. What, what's that feeling like just before that opening show, and you're about to go through the curtain for that first show, right? Live performance. What's that feeling like for you? Sick. It's terri- <laughs> it is absolutely terrifying. It really is. I mean, you sort of, I, I tend to pace, which drives the rest of the cast completely up the wall because they're sort of standing there doing breathing exercises and I'm just pacing. Um, and then I think, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this? And then once you're on, about five minutes in, you're fine. You love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine from there on. But just that initial thing, is it is scary. It's very nerve-wracking. Um, Sorry, my hair was driving me crazy because it's still wet and it won't, won't dry. <laughs> Sorry. Right. 
anyway, grown up, serious person. Yeah. Is there is there anything like that feeling though that you've done that matches that feeling? No. Mm. No, TV doesn't do it. Um film no no. It's it 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 is that live experience, I think, because you you know that you've got people there who've paid to come and see the show and you don't want to let them down, you don't want to let the cast down, and you don't want to look like a complete fool on stage. So, you know, I mean I think you know, there is that actor's nightmare, isn't there? So you go you, you, in your dream, and you think, oh, you get on stage and you can't remember your lines. I and mean, that is that is a recurring nightmare, actually. I have done that twice. Um, completely no forgot, more. just blanked. Completely blanked, completely blanked. But we'd been doing the show for quite a while. I was playing the nurse in Romeo and Juliet and... I had to come and tell Juliet that Romeo just killed Mercutio, I think, and I thought, oh, I've got absolutely no idea where I am. So what? Um, how did you come out of that? Well, thank God, Juliet kind of saw the complete blind panic in my eyes and said, surely you have not come to tell me that Romeo has killed Mercutio. Do you know that's exactly wow. what I Wow, <laughs> that's a great save. <laughs> oh, my God. But we'd been doing the show a lot by that point, and I think you t- there is a real danger that you kind of go into automatic pilot. And I think that's what I did, and that and that brought me up short. I thought, right, that's it, just stay on the ball next time. And I, d- I never did that again. That was a, that was a complete blank. Um, and you would have seen other actors do that as well. Oh, yes. I'm, yes. I mean, I have to say I have occasionally got other actors out of it as well. I'm not the only one. Yeah, <laughs> the only one. Uh, but I mean, you're human. At the end of the day, I think anyone that's done theatre has probably stuffed up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're I think perfect. that's why people like live performance actually, because it's never the same. Um, you can go and see the same show two or three times, and it'll it will, it will always be slightly different. Um, yeah, and that's that's the excitement of it, I suppose. So you, you're the master of accents. So what have you got? You got Australian, Irish, all the different um, permutations of English. Yeah, it, I, you know, actually, different English accents are quite difficult to do because I think I I have such a strong sense of how they should sound. But I do a kind of all-purpose Northern, which I'm sure drives real Northern people up the wall because they probably think, no, that doesn't. That's hold on, go again, sound. go again. No, it's an all-purpose northern accent, really, isn't it? It's up there, isn't oh, it? Oh, like, I love that. And well, yeah. north to a Londoner, north is anywhere north of Swiss Cottage, really. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but they and they and they're also so different. I mean, they you know just in a within a f- very few miles, the accents change, um, given how small England yeah. is. How's um, your Geordie? Geordie is one of the most difficult to do. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. yeah, it's really tough. And also I have a bit of a kind of bugbear about Geordie because once I, when I spent some time up in Newcastle, they everyone just laughed every time I spoke and I thought, right, I'm just going to be quiet now because, A, I don't understand a single oh, word they're saying and okay. they, they just laugh at me. So, <laughs> I'll just be quiet. so you got a bone to pick. Okay. <laughs> No, it's, it's not an issue. Um, yeah, but I've sort of all-purpose Scottish and I've done American and... Scot- um, what, just go Scottish? Can I hear the Scottish? Well, Scottish is like, do you want Edinburgh? That, there's that kind of Edinburgh accent, oh. which is a bit more genteel. And then there's Glasgow, which is a bit more down there. And uh, I hope there's no Scottish people listening to this because they're probably thinking, oh, my God. I mean, it was like when I found out that Rachel, who wrote Ethel, was Irish, I thought, oh, my God. God, I didn't realise she's been listening to me. <laughs> but the Irish people are are very impressed from the comments I I heard. Um, well, yeah, and have read just in just in this thing. Um, you know, okay. someone here is saying most Irish actors, I can tell that they're not Irish, but for you, I couldn't tell. Fantastic job! Oh, how fantastic! Oh, that's yeah. really that's that's one of the best things to hear, actually. That's really good. Like, here's yeah. another one. Is is this your real accent or are you just that good? Such an amazing character, such an amazing performance. Every single time you're on screen, I was happy. How's that? Oh, oh God. Oh, my God, <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, this, this is my real accent. It's, you know, RP London, darling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what, what would you call um, the hag, a mix of 
Irish and children and <laughs> disgusting stews and <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose I'm, I'm. I suppose I was sort of slightly influenced by a very old family friend who was from Cork. Um, so I wasn't trying to absolutely replicate her accent, but I, it's it's definitely not a Dublin accent. A Dublin accent is very specific. It's it's sort of more nasally I'm that that Dublin. Um, so I think it was a kind of you know my version of vaguely a Cork accent. Let's put it that way. No, I was just going to say Cork City is the weirdest accent. It's a very strange accent. So it wasn't that. So I th- I think oh, it was okay. sort of influenced by County Cork. But, yeah, I really okay. hate you and love you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a compliment? Yeah, Ma, it's a compliment. I'm, yeah, I'm going to take it as a compliment. That's very nice. Uh, yeah, well, it you know Ethel doesn't really care whether you like her or not, does she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but I'm, that's that's a really nice thing to say. Thank you. Do you also play? The mother in Total Warhammer War, uh, Warhammer Three. Yeah, we said that before. Yeah. What can you tell us about that project, if anything? Well, that wasn't motion capture. That was just voice. Um, and they wanted a kind of. They initially said Russian, and then they then that they, they decided to go for a kind of. I suppose a sort of Eastern European. Um, so that's that's what I did, and that it was. I thought, oh god, not another bleeding hag again. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but that was quite fun. But it was a much, much shorter project than than Ethel because that was just I can't remember. Was that four or five sessions? I think uh, Mother Astanke. We need to get you a role where you're like a badass with a, <laughs> with a massive gun that. and just dominating, <laughs> kicking ass. What do you reckon, darling? Speak to my agent. Yeah. <laughs> What voice would you have for that? A, a badass sort of warrior type? Oh, darling, it's method. I'd have to think about it. I'd really have to get into character. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were method actor. I could tell. <clears throat> no, no. Do you think Tara would eventually come around to a Tav who married Gail? She doesn't sound too happy in the epilogue party. By the way, you're amazing as Auntie Ethel and Tara. I'm delighted any time I hear you. Touch the move, darlings. I don't think Tara would come around, no. Don't think so. Ooh. She's a cat. She's Well, no, sorry. She's a Tresson. Um, She'd be very annoyed that I called her a cat. No, I don't <laughs> think she'd come. This must I be your know. first time playing a cat, yeah? Um. Yes, I think it is actually. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> You'd hope so. I mean, well, there wouldn't be many other opportunities, would there? <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah, that was. I know. Tara was a joy, partly because it was just it was just voice rather than motion capture, because motion capture it kind of gets exhausting. Oh, you're not afterwards. on your four le- four leg. Um, no, do you know? All they four. didn't give me a cat. <laughs> No cat costume. <laughs> Jeez, I would have paid to see that. That would be that would go viral. That footage. Yeah, oh. it would. It would. <laughs> My goodness. Do you remember yeah, that Tara, Tara voice? Great. Can we hear that? Tara was pretty much Mr. Decarios. I really don't understand what. what? Please shave off that thing on your face. <laughs> One of the directors described it as a sort of mashup between Lady Bracknell and Mary Poppins. And I thought, yeah, I'll go. Oh, I'll take that. Yes. <laughs> it does it does a little bit, but better. What tastes better? Naughty or nice children? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why I put that one in, but I did. <laughs> uh. Oh, obviously naughty. Obviously. No contest. Oh, goodness me. Well, who was your favourite <laughs> character in the game besides your own? Ooh. Oh, my God. And you, there's 200 and, what, 240 characters in that game. 240 actors. There's more characters than that. Yeah, sorry, yeah, actors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, obviously I love Gail. Um, I was going to say yeah. it has to be Gail, yeah. right? Yeah, Gail. I love Gail. Yeah. Um, who else? God. 
<laughs> Astarian, darling? Do you know, I'm sorry, but Astarian has had so much love and adoration. I refuse to give him any more. It's not <laughs> like he deserves it or anything. How many awards has he won now? <laughs> And actually, no, I'm, I met Neil and he was a sweetie. He was great. He was lovely. And he absolutely deserved those awards. It's fantastic. Who did yeah. you, who directed you? Um, well, we, because it was, what, four years really, it was lots of different directors. We started to start with, um, Josh kept was directing, I think, probably about the first eight or nine sessions and then Josh, um, Josh Whedon, yep. Yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah, Josh Whedon. Um, and then Aliana came in, and Tom Mitchell came in, and there, there were so many. There were a lot. And Tom Pally from Larian um, actually directed uh, Tara in the in the last in the epilogue. That was that was Tom from Larian. Um, so we had a lot of directors and movement directors and things. Yeah, so it wasn't just one director. But um, Josh was sort of in charge of the whole thing. We've had Josh on. He's a legend. What was your yes. favourite scene from all your work on this game? We're going to narrow it oh down to one scene. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can barely uh, remember that far back. Um, I know. I've got a memory of a goldfish. I don't even remember what I had for breakfast. I, oh, I'm so glad you said that. Um, Honestly. I who did I play in this? <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, um, I don't know. My no, that's favorite. all right. If you can't think I loved of one doing, I did, did love doing Tara. She was great fun. Yeah. Um, the Hag and Ethel. So they were they were hard work sometimes. Um, but yeah. um, but the writing was so was so was so good that. I, I, I don't know. I I really can't answer that. I'm when sorry. did you first see the hag, like the actual image of her, or the? That was quite a quite a way in, actually. I think I'd probably done about four or five sessions, and I don't know if they were just too embarrassed to show me what what I reminded them of. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't spin so, it. Don't spin and it. Then they showed me, and I thought, oh, my. God, I didn't realise she was quite that awful. She was amazing. But the, the, the thing with doing the hag rather than Ethel was I had to just keep being really careful about where to place my hands because, of course, the hag's hands are absolutely enormous. Um, so I sort of put my hands together and think, no, no, you can't do that. You can't do that because her hands are sort of like you know, huge. But, yeah, so it was about, I think, about five sessions in that I saw the hag and thought, ah, oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> Seeing as you love politics, how would Auntie Ethel go in the political realm? I bet you never expected that question. Neither did I, but I've just come up with it. It's probably the most ridiculous question you'll ever hear, but there you go. Answer that I one, think, Rena. She'd be a very good prime minister. She'd be a great politician. She'd just do away with everyone who got who got on the wrong side of her, wouldn't she? <laughs> She'd probably fit in, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Can I please have my eye back? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy answer to that one. No, you can't. <laughs> Do you sometimes call people sweetie or pumpkin in real life as a leftover from the character? I have called people petal, and I do have rather a bad habit of calling people darling. And people think that's being actory, but it's not. It's because my mum used to call everybody darling because she could never remember anyone's name. So I, that's a kind of leftover from her. So it's nothing to do with being an actor. It's just that I'm really forgetful. But, no, I, I do call people Petal occasionally, which I quite like that one, Petal. You haven't called me Petal this, in this chat. You've only called no, me Darling. You, you don't deserve it yet. We'll get to the end. And see oh, if okay. I'm working up to it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, okay. If you had grandkids, would you dress up as the hag for Christmas <laughs> and tell them they were bad? Because <laughs> I'm actually, actually really quite a nice person, really. I am. I'm really. I, I, 
<laughs> you had some weird. We, you've got some weird viewers. I know. Very well, strange questions. I can't take. I can't take credit for them. All right. Where's but the sophisticated questions? They're somewhere here. All right. <laughs> 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 oh goodness me! Question or did someone ask that? Someone asked that, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, I'm not no, taking credit for that. I would not do that. I would not. You would not do that, yeah. No. Oh goodness me! Where does this um, experience rank for you? Do you think for your career is this up there? Definitely, yeah, definitely. Because it was partly because it was something I'd never done before. Um. And my default setting is all, when I'm starting something is always, oh, my God, I can't do that. And then to find out that actually this is something that you can do um, and that you actually enjoy doing. And because it was it's working on something for four years, it gives you a real chance to develop it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I would put that up there. Yeah, definitely. And and also just the people that um, I was working with. And I know I, mean, I do sometimes get slightly nauseated when you hear actors go, oh, God, we all loved each other in the cast. And I love the director. Think, oh, please, <laughs> give me a break. But actually, all the people at Pit Stop and everyone I worked with was, was really sweet, really nice people. So, yeah, that's it's definitely up there. They? Yeah, they were genuinely. Yeah. And if people, if, if this is the first time they've seen you work, where where should they go next? What should they see you in next or go back and find of your work? What would you recommend? Oh, my God. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I suppose, well, if, if it's video games, the next thing would be Mother of Stanky, I suppose, in total, in total war. Um, Have you ever done audio books? <laughs> no, I haven't, actually. Really? I haven't done all- yeah, you should I, I do. To, you should be doing that. I have to talk to my agent about. Yeah, that. definitely. Yeah. Get on to Soho about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you you would enjoy you would you would love doing that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it'd be, yeah, it would be fun to do that actually. Um, but no, I haven't. I don't know if they've ever put me up for it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it would be a good thing to do. Yeah. Because you could knock it out at, at night time. Ah, peace easy, and peasy. serenity. <laughs> What are you reading at the moment? It's a rather well. It's a rather obscure book. Yeah, it's called "I'll Burn That Bridge When I Get to It" by Norman Finkelstein. Okay, it's a it's a politics book, of course. So yeah, exploring what themes? It's exploring the notion of identity politics and um, what that is doing to a kind of cohesive. I suppose for lot of the political philosophy. That's the the shortest way to put it. Uh, right. He's an American academic, um, and he's kind of on the. Um, he's been sidelined, marginalised to some extent because he doesn't fit in with the, the accepted narrative, the establishment narrative, the mainstream. Um, and I've been sort of listening to him, and he does podcasts as well occasionally. But he, but it's it sounds a lot more boring than it is because he writes very well, and there's real humour in the in the way he puts things. Um, so I'm reading that. I t- I tend to read about four or five books at a time. What was the other thing I'm reading? I've slightly forgotten. Four or five at a time. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because I have the concentration of a flea. So you know, I start something, and I think, yeah, I've, I've got to that. But then I'll start another one now, and then I'll go back to the other one. So how do you <laughs> how do you go on things like Twitter and the internet and and constant distractions? Yeah, yeah, I've got to, I've got to kind of cut the cut the time I spend on. I think it's also partly because when I because I am awake at, at, late at night, um, and I also tend not to listen to what to watch TV news. So I get a lot of my news on X, as it's now called. Oh, sorry, because of the yeah, I've not got Twitter there. X. I yeah. know oh, it's so annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where they can follow you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave the link. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm, I I do need to be careful about what I put sometimes. Oh no, it's, yes. it's unabashedly you. Yeah, you can't. Is, yeah, it you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so you do you do get distracted a little bit, yeah. I do, yeah, I do, I do, <clears throat> and I, and I think that has a lot to do with things like social media. I do get distracted, but um, yeah, I do still, I do still, I I can still be constructive in other ways. Really, she said, lying through her teeth, but yeah. As we wrap up, is there anything you want to say to the fans that have tuned in today? I want I um, I have to say I have been completely overwhelmed by the response to that game. It's been extraordinary. I mean, I have you know speaking as someone who is not not that au fait with video games. I thought oh yeah well we're down Baldur's Gate 3 yeah nobody's heard of it nobody knows what anything's what's happening. And then it's just gone stratospheric and that has got so much obviously to do with the fans who have who have responded ex- you know, it's been extraordinary. It's been absolutely extraordinary. So I'm very, very grateful to them and um, and for all the lovely comments and sending you lots of love, all of you. Beautiful. Thank you for taking some time, Rena. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you for asking me, and I've actually enjoyed it. Um, and apologies for the wet hair and the, the tea and the, the, the snotty tissues. But... <laughs> Do you do you have a do you have a new respect for games now? Do you think I do? After, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had absolutely no idea what went into them, but that working on this, um, and it's also it's also such a huge industry, and there's you know it's it's hard work. What I think it what took six seven years to do this game. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And all the people, um, you know, there's so much that goes into it that I know absolutely nothing about. And thank you for not asking me any of those kinds of questions. Oh, my God, this is going to be deeply embarrassing. No, no, no. And <laughs> we need to pitch to Larian and to Pit Stop for you to play in their next game. A oh. lovely lady. No. Thank you. Nothing <laughs> wrong with her at all. Perfectly normal, lovely, hilarious <laughs> Lady, how does that sound? Um, yeah, um, yeah. Let me know how that goes, darling. <laughs> Petal, okay. <laughs> oh no! No more hags. No more hags. All right. Well, can we? Well, very, very nice to meet you, Dan. No, very nice to meet you too. Well, can we? Is it possible to hear the hag to finish this one off? If oh, can she sure say? God, Petal. Of course, it is love. It is grand to be here. I have to go now because there's a child in the pot. So I have to go in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll let you go. No, oh, th- thank you very much. Thanks really so appreciate much. it.